is Griffith here, and today we are going to start learning some building blocks of artwork so that we can learn how to do better art. Just like if you were a baker in the kitchen and you wanted to make a cake, but you ran in there and you grabbed your mom's flour and sugar and started putting it in the bowl and maybe an egg or two and put it in the oven and and then what would you come up with? I don't know, it would be a mystery. It might be good, but most likely it won't taste right. It'll taste a little bit funny. So if you were to get a recipe and say, oh, I use two eggs, I use three cups of flour, I use four cups of sugar, which that would be a lot, but then I put it all together and make a cake. Then it would be like, ooh, I put a little frosting on it. Oh my goodness, it's so good. So we're gonna learn some building blocks on art. So there is the elements of art, which are space and color and shape and form and value. And then there's the principles of design, which are balance, contrast, emphasis, movement, pattern, rhythm, and unity. Today we're going to talk about unity and variety. So what makes up unity? It's called unity or harmony in the principle of design and it gives the artwork a sense of completion that it all looks like it's all together. It's all one piece. Like it makes sense. Like it looks like a cake when you cooked it. It tastes like a cake because that's what you wanted. So unity brings everything, all of the elements, all the ingredients together. And it says, voila, it's done. It looks good. And I understand the picture. All right. So I'm going to teach you a couple of the elements, a couple of things to look for and things to use. So some of the elements in unity are things like texture, color, tone, the things, the, how the color is, light or dark, um, direction. Is everything moving in the same direction or is it all uh, everywhere going crazy? Um, the proportions of things. If they're large scale, small scale, they take up the whole page, things like that. The proportions of them, the form and the shape. So how things look. Do you have a bunch of circles on the page? Do you have a bunch of squares on the page? Do you have organic figures or geometric figures? So those things all play a part in how your picture will turn out, the overall view of it, all right? so. When we're talking about texture, okay, this is a picture of these dancers, the ballet dancers by Degas. Now you'll see that there's all kinds of like, the texture of the page is all the same. The brush strokes and how he painted is throughout the whole picture. One part isn't scratchy and, and lines, like Van Gogh paints like that. Um, they're all, you know, the same kind of lines, the same kind of fuzziness. The Impressionists painted um, their pictures in a beautiful way. Um, I, it's kind of like a dream, like dreamy pictures, where you squint your eyes and it, you can see it, you know, but it's not like a photograph, like when you take a picture and everything is real clear. So Impressionism um, is a type of painting that is like that. So when you see things like Monet and, and Degas here, and, they, and even Van Gogh, they, they put, painted in a way where it was kind of dreamy and kind of fuzzy. So that's one way that you can make it look together. Um, another way that you can make unity in your picture is by the colors that you use together. Um, this beautiful picture here by Monet. Let's see, what is the name of it? It is the banks of Syene. So this beautiful picture here is made with um, kind of cool colors and everything kind of goes together. Um, all of the elements that are in there go together because the colors all make your eyes say, 
Oh, I like that color. Um, there's a little bit of contrast, the colors and the yellow, you know, contrasting against the blue. Um, it makes it, you know, so you can notice the flowers a little bit more. But overall, it's a be beautiful, um, cool balance of color. So that's how they've used color to create unity there. Um, another thing that you can use is this thing called the, the golden scene, the golden section, or the rule of thirds, where they um, say that if you divide up your picture into thirds, you make a graph on it where you divide up each line is even like that and you divide it up into thirds that the things of interest to your eye kind of glaring are going to be like in the intersections of the graph okay so you'll see how this two-thirds of the page is where your eye wants to go and over here there's a little boat and so he's kind of got He's kind of got things, you know, balanced in a way where it, it looks good. It's not all straight, one big boat. You can't see what's going on because there's too much going on. It wants to give your eye a place to rest and just to look at it. You know, when we look at this, um, this scene right here, it's telling a picture. Let's see if we can see it closer. There's like a dad and his three boys, maybe. That's who they are. They're kind of going out for, you know, a, a stroll on the water in their boat. And um, they don't look like they're talking and, and interacting a lot. They're just enjoying the, the ocean and just being together. Um, so when Winslow, that's the painter, when he painted this together, and he wanted to tell that story. And so he used the, um, the things that he placed on here so that our eyes would go to it. Now, if there was nothing in the background and then that was all the focus, then you wouldn't see all the rest of the area over here. But he's given your eye a little place to go because it wants to travel there. And just like if you were writing a story and you had some illustrations in your book, um, that were part of your story. You as an artist are telling your viewers what you want them to know. So if I was picking up a book in a library and I saw a picture of maybe someone with a flashlight and they were looking behind things and, and um, maybe they had on like a Sherlock Holmes hat and I would see that and I would think, hmm, I bet this story is about mystery and, and they're going to solve a crime or, or something like that. Um, as an artist, we tell stories with our pictures, with the, the things that we paint, the things that we draw, the sculptures that we make. We tell stories to our viewer, not just for ourselves, but for other people to see. And we have that power with these tools that we have to tell our eyes where to go. So in the rule of thirds, the law of thirds, there is this golden section that, that talks about how your eye will travel, okay? So what you want in the perfect picture is for your eye to start in the back of the picture, and then you want it to go down and around to this last third of the picture, and then to go and end up like right there. So you're telling the viewer that you're gonna have something for them, that like a little scavenger hunt for their eye, a little trail. So you're gonna put things where you want their eyes to go. Where you say, okay, I'm gonna take you by the hand and I'm gonna say, okay, look at, look at my picture. You know, start at the back and, and go around and, and look down here. And oh, look at that, the boat is on rough water there. And we look at the sail and it's coming around and there's clouds that are dark. Maybe they'll get stuck in a storm, oh no. And then look at the family that's there. Look at the boys and the guy that's 
there. What is their expression? They don't really look worried. They just kind of look hmm, hanging out, you know. So he's kind of taking your eye all the way around, just like that. So some of these things aren't exact, but they're just tools to help us to learn how to put things together. So what I want you to do is I want you to find, get on a website, ask your parents to, to log you in to a, a museum website, like the Kimball Art Museum or the Chicago Art Institute. There's all kinds of virtual tours out there, especially now where everything is virtual. Um, there's a lot of ways for you to look at art. I want you to start looking at the master painters, the people who studied art for years, and there are hundreds, some of them have been around for a couple hundred years or more, where their paintings are hanging up in museums all over the world because they have really learned how to master the art of painting and drawing and putting art together. So I'm gonna let you go with that in mind and thinking about what you can do on your next project to use the element and the principles of art in using the unity to make your project look like it's finished, all right? So I hope that you've learned something today about the tools that we have for art, and it's been fun. See you next time.